So welcome to In the Deep End with Edekira. So when I invited the five guests that appear on the soundtrack album to Last Cancer and Rewinds, they thought it was all about just music, rapping and singing and all of that. Little did they know that they also had to appear in the deep end and talk about their own personal swimming journeys. I mean, what were they thinking? The film documentary is about swimming. Today, we have a young lady by the name of MJ Baker, and she appears on three tracks on the album. You probably recognize her voice from this. Hashtag busy as a combo. Let's take a mo and talk about it. Let's break the myths and stereotypes. Introduce the world to a different hype. Show the world that blacks can swim. Change the narrative, it's a big thing. Afro and this sign of times. Well, Megan, also known as MJ Baker, is here with us today. Let's see what she has to say about her personal day. So, MJ Baker, I know that you're a great singer, you've got a great voice, you've got an amazing voice and all that kind of thing, but can you swim? I actually can. Wow, okay, that's yeah. good. I don't know why I'm surprised. <laughs> I don't know why I'm surprised. Um, you, you heard me say, wow. I don't know why I'm surprised. But yeah, but yeah it's, 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 okay, good. So um, what's, your, what's your story? Well, uh, actually, my mom, my mom was, she wanted her, she's a country girl, a farm girl, and who moved to the city. Um, and so she really wanted um, my sisters and brothers and I to have the opportunities to do things that she never did. And so when I was younger, um, I would go to summer to the summer camp at the YMCA. And um, the I didn't know that there were not black people who could swim because the swimming was at the Y for the summer camp was one of the classes. So there was black lifeguards and all of that um, in my neighborhood. Um, you know, the, the nearby neighborhood. And then I lived around two major black high schools here in Jacksonville, Florida, Reigns High School, Reball High School. And they both had swim teams. So, um, and they're predominantly black schools. And so um, for me, I didn't officially learn how to swim. So what happened was um, I was in the kiddie pool part of it when I was younger. And then one day, I think I was about eight or nine years old, I decided that I wanted to just jump on the deep end. And I jumped in the deep end side of the pool and I almost drowned. And the lifeguard saved me. And I kind of built up a fear, like every time I get in the pool, I'm gonna drown. But then when I was about like maybe 20 plus years old, um, I decided I want to take lessons and I want to officially, I really want to learn how to swim, like really good. And um, a really close girlfriend of mine was um, on a university swim team and she taught me how to swim. And so I used to uh, go to the pool every day and just swim. Oh, that's amazing. So, yeah. so your family, friends, do they all swim? Not everybody. Um, I think people. I think they go in the water. You know, you wade in the water, and you, you know, you dive and different things like that. But I don't know if any of them ever took swimming lessons. Like I took swimming lessons. Yeah. So how to sh how to do the stroke, how to do all those things. Yeah. So so how often do you swim? Um, I don't get to do it as much as I used to. Um, but whenever I can get into somebody's pool. So, um, but lately I don't live in an, uh, there's an Olympic size pool down the street for me, but I never can get there. But I do too enjoy. Busy. Too busy other things. 
I know. Lots of, <laughs> lots of getting in the way. <laughs> it's too, I'm too busy. And it's like this conversation is uh, bringing back how I used to get up. I, I literally used to get up at like five o'clock in the morning. I still do to go like work out at the gym, but I don't swim. Um, but I used to get up and go to the pool and swim a couple of laps and then get ready to go to work. In, in, so, in England, there's an issue with swimming within the, shall I say ethnic minorities in the African Caribbean and Asian communities. There's, there's an issue with a disproportionate amount of us that do not swim. You know, um, I think when I started, so it was, man, it may, it's some, some years ago um, when I started, I watched the um, Olympics, Michael Phelps during the Olympics trial, you know, that, that time period. And I remember hearing people talk about um, the disparagement of not a lot, you don't see a lot of um black americans in the swimming for the olympics like you like they were just talking about where are the people of color where is the color and i think that was the first time it ever hit me like yeah where are the people of <laughs> like you know i just that was my first time going yeah because you know how you subconsciously i feel like we're taught certain sports are just for certain people. And so you don't question it until someone raises the question or says something. And then I didn't know all the full statistics until, you know, catching a glimpse of your film, you know, being like, you know, us working together um, on some of the music and being able to understand, wow, okay. It is, um, I think it's a subconscious thing, you know, where you don't, you don't think about it, you know, in respects to, I mean, just like with me as a musician, I thought only white people played the guitar until I saw black people playing the guitar. And then I realized, oh, I could do this too. <laughs> it, it is a thing, yeah. And that's why we need role models. That's why we need, you know, you see more people doing it than you 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 will do it as well. People that look like you doing it, yeah, and yeah. So it's it's, it's a very very important issue that you know that we're, we're discussing, as you know. Um, one of, one of the reasons that a lot of women quote as the reason why they don't swim is their hair. Yeah. <laughs> so in your situation, you've got lovely hair, and I know and I've, and I've I've seen a lot of your 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 videos, your pictures, and everything. You've always got your hair in the immaculate way, in a creative <laughs> way. So would that deter you from going to the pool? Um, it would not. Now, would I have to plan? Yes, because, you know, definitely it's, um, you know, a situation where, especially with color hair, colored hair, um, you know, I color my hair. So I would definitely need to prepare and even when, even when I was going to the pool on a weekly basis, um, I would say, I, was, I would choose days. So I would say, okay, I'm gonna swim Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then I would know that, okay, I need to wash my hair right afterwards or, you know, I have to plan it. So yeah, definitely, but it would not prevent me. No, because it's something that I like to do. And um, so it's something that I, I enjoy. Even like, you know, the open water swimming and things of that nature, like, um, like I went scuba diving with a girlfriend wow. for her birthday. Check um, her out. <laughs> and we, you know, and I was, you know, out in the water and, it was a really beautiful experience, yeah. although because I hadn't been swimming, you know, cause you're using different muscles. You're mm -hmm. using a lot of muscles when you swim that you don't normally use. And mm -hmm. so the, my, the soreness the next day, because, you know, it's like, I'm you're using your legs to tread and, you know, just different things like that. But once you do get comfortable, you know, and be able to do those things, it'll be, you know, a beautiful experience because you can do a lot of things. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I hope to get to that stage very soon. I'm sure I will. I've got a great instructor, so um, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. And, and one thing that a lot of people confuse with swimming, which is almost as important, no, it's actually more important than swimming, is understanding water safety. Mm -hmm. water safety and I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you a question it's not a trick question supposing you were walking down the road but by the river and you saw somebody fall into the into the river or into the pool what, what's the first thing what would you do call 911 perfect perfect in 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 in, in, the, in the uk obviously we have 999 and we and it's the Coast Guard, you call the Coast Guard, but you'd be surprised how many people will just jump in and try and save them. But there's right. a lot of people that believe that as long as they can swim, they can, you know, they can do things, they can jump, right, they can save right. someone. But they don't take into effect the, you know, the underwater, the currents, the cold water, yeah, and all that kind of thing. So although we, we on, on top of asking people, encouraging people to learn how to swim, we also you know, encourage people to be water confident and water safe first. So, so it's good. So you, yeah, you get, you get, you definitely gave the right answer. Yeah, so, I think yeah. sometimes we have to realize that we may not be fully equipped. <laughs> I think that's why you know you have lifeguards because you know lifeguards they are trained to carry weight when they swim. That's a part yeah. of their training, you know. And so I guess. Uh, you know, a, the reality check is, you know, can I do that same thing? And am I, am I uh, capable of doing it? So, yeah. My daughter is 11, is 11 years old. Mm -hmm. And she has already, I mean, at first, she, you know, she went swimming, she swims and other kind of things. She goes to like, you know, swimming classes and all of that. But as she's growing older, it's becoming less and less of a, things she wants to do and and especially as you know she's you know trying different hairstyles and things like that right. you know, it's you know so we're trying to encourage them you know encourage them you know it's fun it's exciting that kind of thing and and hopefully you know we'll be able to change the narrative yeah. right yeah. well if i can uh, really quickly um your point about women and you know, young girls as they get older, just uh, being a woman um, and understanding that, you know, we are taught, we're not taught to be very secure in our bodies when we're going through those, those pivotal moments where, um, you know, you're developing, you know, you start developing, you start getting your monthly menstruation, you just different things like that. And those um, things that happen to our bodies, um, if we think about it really in society, come with some shame, right? They come with a bit of shame. And so, you know, as a girl is developing her, you know, chest, her butt, her different hips, different things like that, you know, she's always told to cover it up. And I think that the mental aspect of that is really can really discourage a young girl, you know, but if she's taught to, hey, this is just something that's happening to you and this is a part of life and let's find something that you might feel more comfortable in because society teaches us as women and I'm, as I have been learning in the past couple of years, learning not to be ashamed of my body and learning not to be ashamed you know, that I have hips, I have butt, I have, you know, these things that I cannot do anything about. They run in my family. It happens, you know, that sort of thing. So um, I just wanted to add that piece to it because it's very important very that important. young girls learn to embrace and love their bodies. And we're not, we're not taught that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We're, we're taught to be ashamed when our periods come on. We're taught to be ashamed when our boobs get bigger. And, um, you know, it should be something that we should be able to embrace. And the more we talk about it, the more it becomes, you know, something that, you know, we get used to. So, so thank you very much for that. I really appreciate that. That's really, really good.
Yeah, for sure. What have you been up to musically, work-wise? What, what, what's new? Tell us about, Megan, tell us about MJ Baker. Okay, well, um, I actually have, you know, have my hands in, you know, a number of, of pots, which is really great. And um, so first thing, um, business-wise, I am, I started my own company called Najem Music. And you, you've been a client. And I'm so thankful for that. Um, and basically, it separates the artistry from uh, the business in respects to I do background vocals, lead vocals, I, you know, uh, songwriting, um, helping other artists like yourself, um, you know, manifest their, their vision in whatever way capacity that they want me to do that. And so um, that has been an exciting, you know, part. It's like my baby, as people say, and, you know, and just watching the company grow. And um, it's, you know, we're almost a year old and um, I want to continue to grow it and um, build, you know, something bigger, you know, for, to help other artists um, grow in their processes. And, um, and then MJ Baker as the artist, I'm working, currently working on um, releasing some projects this year. And I have a mixtape that I'm working on that people can stream for free. And um, I'm a lover of rock and roll. I love all types of music. I, I, I'm so thankful for the household I was raised in because even though we went to church every Sunday and Bible study, my mom was very free, it, uh, allowed me to listen to anything that I wanted to as long as there was no profanity. So um, I was exposed to Bon Jovi, and, you know, Joan Hart. And, you know, I, so, to the, so the mixtape is going to be... Um, you know, my rendition of a lot of my favorite songs. And, um, and then I'm going to be releasing a music video. And, um, and then I'm also working on completing my album. So um, I do have one, uh, my, my first project that I released in 2017. And um, the second project is going to be coming out in 2023. So I'm very excited about it because um, it's, it's a lot more personal because I've grown a lot more as a person and as an artist. So I know that I can't wait. I really yeah, can't wait. So really you've, got, 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 you've got a lot of good stuff coming out. Yeah, yeah and I really, yeah, I really can't wait. And yeah. like I keep on saying, you've got an amazing voice. And thank, and thank you for sharing it with um, sharing it with people like myself. Yeah, yes, I really, really appreciate that. So, so if, if 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 anyone, if people want to hear your stuff or they want to know about you, where where can they go? Okay, so if you want to learn more about me, you can definitely go to my website, um, mjbakermusic.com, um, and then also my music you can stream. Um, MJ Baker on Spotify, YouTube. You can find me in all of those places. Um, my Instagram is at MJ Baker Music. My Facebook page is MJ Baker Music. So um, you'll be able to find me in any of those places. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much for uh, giving your time and you know, having a conversation with me in the deep end of Educura. Yeah. Um, and, and, and thank you for blessing the soundtrack to Blast Cancer. I Reboot. know. Yeah, and you've, got your, you've got three, the three tracks on there with your voice on there and then they are you know, some of my favorite songs. So oh my gosh. thank you very yeah. much for that. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much for asking me to be a part of it. It's very exciting. And I can't wait to um, listen to the full project yeah. on the 28th of February. Thank you. Okay. Um, have a great day. Thank you, you again. Too. Thank you. I pray, I pray, I pray to get me through the night. I tried, I tried, I tried, but